Covid. Isn't the weather good today? Are you sure that it won't start raining in an hour? Why are you so sure? Yes, because some of you are holding their phones and you can check the forecast. Some of you could check it in the morning when uh, stepping out of your apartments. The forecast for right now, for the evening, should I take my umbrella or uh, should I uh, take uh, warm clothing or maybe on the country? Uh, how uh, my commute should be, should I take public transportation, or what, uh, what my uh, weekend is going to be. Everything depends on the weather, and this information presented in a right manner helps you uh, to make informed decisions for a long run or for a shorter run. Uh, we have been thinking about the positive, and we came up with the concept that we call cyber weather. And our presentation is devoted to this concept. Uh, we are going to discuss the problems that are faced today, how they can be tackled, and what they have to do with the weather, or more precisely, cyber weather. One short disclaimer. Uh, our presentation uh, has nested secret for those who really appreciate the topic. And those who find it will get credits from us and our feedback, if you are right or not. Just try to find it. Okay, I have already started talking about ascent. Uh, maybe some of them hear about it for the first time. Actually, it's a discipline which is about uh, looking for and collecting information uh, from public sources, uh, systematizing it, analyzing it, and processing it. It started long ago, long before the advent of the Internet, in the days of physical uh, media, television, newspapers, and so forth. Intelligence officers uh, would collect intelligence uh, from public sources, systematize them, and uh, based on that intelligence uh, judged as to uh, the countries they worked in, and such intelligence was collected on both adversaries and friends, because it's important to know uh, what your surrounding is about, how well your friends are, or your enemies are. Uh, this was the situation before. A lot of efforts uh, was required to collect this intelligence. People needed to read all this information, write it down, analyze it. Today, in the era of total uh, uh, intelligence availability, information availability. We have access to tons of intelligence. It is generally available, and the most important thing is what you want to find and why. And everyone is doing that. Let's not uh, put aside intelligence services, but there are also commercial companies or specialized organizations, even a university and school students complete ascent uh, tasks being asked to find some intelligence and bring it by. Uh, this is my general definition of ascent. Now let's discuss what tasks may require ascent and when. And I should begin from uh, the basics. Uh, what uh, crosses my mind when I hear about ascent? It's about investigation. A company uh, comes and says, I want to be I want to investigate this or that company, and we start trying to find out who the counterparts of the company are 
Устан капитале другой компании. What relationships it's part of? Юридических, экономических связей между компаниями и where does it hold interest? Юристов, детективов, различных. It may be of interest to both legal counselors or investigators. However, uh, what uh, can you get from such ascent exercise? All those pictures, uh, maps, information about individuals' assets, their relationships, their relatives, their lifestyle. Uh, with all this information on thousands of uh, pages of paper, the intention is to draw some conclusion as to the lifestyle of a human or a company. Another task that may, uh, that may come, it usually comes from PR people and marketing people who uh, may care uh, for the company's brand. What's out there in the internet or social media? What is said about our company? What's being said about our products or our brand? There may be resources out there uh, trying to uh, lure customers in to uh, sell uh, fake products. And Ascent also helps address those questions doing things such as brand protection. Shall you, you have been mentioned here, and uh, you have been mentioned in a good way, and here they mentioned you in a bad way, and those bad guys uh, want to sell uh, fake products, uh, passing them as yours. Uh, this is Alexander McQueen product which is not fake, for example, and so forth. Story number three is closer to us. Information security people come to us, understanding that internal protection should be uh, built not only relying on the knowledge of what's in there, but also understanding what may have leaked. Uh, the leakage in the internet, including credentials, logins and passwords, understanding who works in the company, uh, their full names, their contact details. On top of this, such a company may be interested in selling access in the dark web, mentioning the company in the context of prepared attacks. I used to study the dark web, and I could find their announcements like last joint efforts and find out everything about this company, and those efforts were well coordinated, time-wise and effort-wise. All those things are base cases, basic situations that cross my mind uh, when we engage in discussing ASAN. So what's wrong here? Why uh, did we start considering what should be uh, done next in addition to just collecting intelligence, amassing it? For us to better understand this challenge, to better understand uh, what's wrong and what's right, I'd like to give you an example. It comes from the world of cooking. We all want to eat good and delicious food to feed ourselves. This is our goal. How can this be achieved? Uh, first of all, uh, we can go uh, to a supermarket, buy some foodstuffs, prepare them, process them, uh, cook them and put them on the plate. And uh, it looks quite obvious uh, we have been living with that. Uh, well, uh, in some cases, it's the parents who cook, some people uh, cook themselves, others learn how to cook using various social media or websites. 
However, this process hides a lot of hidden agenda which uh, can be compared against ASEAN. First of all, it's important to find proper ingredients. For this, you need to know which food store, uh, which grocery store sells what. Uh, what do you need to buy? Then you go to this grocery store, you buy the foodstuffs, but you need some skills to evaluate uh, the foodstuffs quality. Okay, you have brought your basket of foodstuffs, and all of a sudden uh, you understand that uh, you don't have uh, the knife you need, or uh, the calendar you need, or something else, and you need some intelligence to. Uh, process uh, what you know, and then you get down to the actual cooking, for which you need hard skills, you need to know something about uh, the ingredients, you need to know how to uh, work them. Last but not least, you can say, uh, those uh, positive analysts are funny, and their reports are really cool. But look, uh, it's not enough to cook the dish. It's also important to make it look nice, not just delicious. And uh, the problem I try to highlight has to do with cooking, and not always. How can it be done differently? You can order home delivery, and the courier uh, will bring your dishes to you, and uh, the image of your order may uh, look like uh, the image you relied upon when uh, browsing the website, but is it really so? And this is a matter of trust. Uh, well, uh, did the cook uh, use the uh, right ingredients? Do they go together well? Uh, it's uh, the most uh, complex part of cooking. If we translate it into the language of ASEAN, all the data that we uh, see uh, in the uh, web, those ingredients, those foodstuffs, the materials that we uh, use for cooking, all those things are just tools. But it's not enough uh, to collect and uh, process information. It's important to analyze it. And here, another essence, uh, another entity comes, uh, which is uh, called analytics. And it's intended to help you make informed decisions. It's not enough to have tons of data. You may uh, draw in those data. You will not be able to make informed decisions based on them. And let's consider one case. My colleague uh, shared this case with me. Is their pain point. It's about how they ordered ASEAN from ASEAN experts. And the deliverable they got. I already feel their pain. So I apologize if I start weeping when telling you about it. Those guys turn to us as experts. They said, uh, "We need to collect intelligence about our company. What do people speak? What do people say about ourselves in the dark web? What?" has leaked, what can be used against us. Oh, we need this intelligence in order to improve our information security, our protection. It took those guys three weeks to come up with the proper intelligence. And then they returned with their report. It was really a beautiful, well-arranged. It had images from Yandex Maps. Uh, well, there were images showing the company's office from different perspectives. 
no, no. Uh, all those things that might have been necessary for those who wanted to uh, improve their uh, infosec. But they uh, found in those pictures a picture showing their office uh, with the gate open, open a jar. Uh, which meant that they had problems with physical access control. Uh, they had also found the company's official website, and there was a section devoted to it. This is your domain, uh, this is your landing page. Then they drilled down to the uh, contact uh, tab with uh, the official phone number and address of the company. Everything was well structured, saying, look, we know that information about you has been posted in the internet. Uh, there was also a section devoted to the organizational structure uh, with the names of the top managers and their respective emails and phone numbers. And they also included that in the report. It was a brainstorm. And they uh, posted that information in the eye of the God. Passing it as information from leakages. They collected those search results and added them uh, to the report. And they came up with beautiful uh, deliverable with the company's address and company's domain, their website, and the list of their top managers and their contact details, as well as information from public resources. And cherry on the cake, uh, these are the pictures that we could found in the social media of the employees of that company from the corporate party where they what spend some time, etc., etc. So that's an interesting report that the customer would get. And then the customer doesn't know what to do with that, how that knowledge can be used in order to upgrade the IS system to make sure that this information is not leaked on the Internet. So this is a conventional situation that your expectations is your problem. So the customer couldn't come up with a request and uh, then doesn't know what to do with that information. So secondly, let's think about how to improve that process, and Jan will help us to consider that. All in all, it could be done differently. Let's have a look at how it could be done differently. Uh, there is no problem finding information on Vadim showed that very well. And uh, the main problem is to derive at least some knowledge, make some conclusions and get some takeaways from that situation, for instance. Let's look at a simple process, uh, for instance, vulnerability management. For instance, we have an IS officer who scans the uh, security perimeter, obtains some results. 10,000 vulnerabilities being obtained, uh, being identified. Uh, what to do with that, sadly? This officer can try to fix them, to patch them. But the officer will spend a lot of time on that, about uh, six months at least. Every day about uh, 50 new vulnerabilities may occur that may uh, fit with his infrastructure. After 10,000 vulnerabilities have been fixed, then another scanning can be done, and uh, another 10,000 vulnerabilities would emerge, and it means that it would require six months of work more. So most likely the officer would be burnt out and would uh, get dismissed. What we can do, we can derive some conclusions, derive some data, knowledge from that mass of data, for instance. You may have a look at the OSS of the vulnerabilities, where vulnerabilities are. And then our officer would get some pool of vulnerabilities that can be fixed. Not too much time would be required to 
Jodat and Terion. So what do that? The same is true for OSINT, for instance. We have a big pool of data that we get from OSINT, but the problem is that if in that pool of data some conclusions and knowledge can be derived, what do you do about that? This is the point that the Secret officer has uh, ordering that research and obtain these results. Let's uh, discuss what the CEO of the company does. There are two problems. The CEO wants to derive, to obtain some profit and uh, to make sure that the company doesn't uh, go bankrupt. If Cyber security principles are to be incorporated, not to spend a lot of money on cyber security and getting some profit from that. Another question could be asked. Those two intolerable events for the CEO could occur thanks to some gaps in the information security perimeter. In order to fix those gaps, we offer four questions that would require answers. What about the cyber cyber environment around the company, why this is so important. Let's have a look at the example. For instance, we have a plant which is doing some production and discharges uh, the waste into the river. Until no one knows, it doesn't matter whether the uh, plant is working or not. So it makes some profit and the company functions. But then mass media starts investigation, publishes data that the plant is involved in a non-eco-friendly activity. What happens next? Eco-hackers uh, engage. These are the people who stand up for ESG agenda. They try to make sure that all the companies follow the environmental principles, and they try to punish that plant. They start hacking of that uh, company and the plant uh, stops working. So the result is very regrettable. How can we avoid that? Analyzing the uh, information environment of the company, seeing that article on the mass media, certain measures could be taken. We spoke about hacktivists, but now let us deep dive. Why is it so important for us to understand what motives and opportunities are there Let's speak about the opportunities for the criminals. If we know how the criminals are acting, some hackers group, it means that we can develop some tactics in order to anticipate all those attacks scenarios. For instance, we know that we are being attacked by that hackers group. In 90% cases, it would use social engineering as the primary source of data. What we can do about that, we can do some cyber trials aimed at improving the skills of resistance to social engineering of our employees. And our employees most likely would not click the links, would not pick up their phone when the criminals are calling them, would not not providing access to their working places. Therefore, the criminal group will not be able to attack. That's good. Motives. Why we have to know the motives? For instance, there are ransomware criminals who would attack the company and would uh, repel the data, would encrypt the infrastructure, and would ask for a ransom to decrypt that and to make sure that um, this data would not be leaked anywhere else. And um, they then may sell the access to your data to their peers, and the company would be encrypted more and more, and it goes in circles. If we had known that before, that we could become the target for ransomware criminals, we could uh, incorporate some protection measures. Next point, what we have to think about, what the heads of the companies have to think about. This is about the degree of the protection of their counterparties and uh, service providers. Why this is so important? Once we have certain ties, for instance, common network access, where we open their emails, and that means that we trust them. Thanks to that trust and confidence, an attack can be made. First, your counterpart, your partner and uh, supplier can be attacked and then ending up with you. And the last question that we can find answer to, 
is where their cyber attacks against my company are being scheduled. Why this is important? Because we can mobilize our information security department, our SLC department, if we have it. That, for instance, uh, next to that data, cyber attack would be committed. Therefore, we could resist uh, to the actions of the criminals. So we answered those questions, and it would be reasonable enough to say that uh, seen the way we want to see it, has to answer a number of questions. Who is going to attack me? How and when? Answering these questions, we can arrange a very good cybersecurity system in our company thanks to OSINT, a very simple tool. In essence, we moved further. There is a direct connection. So what we do in the morning, so we check the weather forecast um, to see whether it would be raining in order to carry a, an umbrella with us. So our head of the company have to be able to check with an application which is made on the back of the envelope to see the weather in terms of the cyber and information, the weather in the next days and whether the company would be attacked and whether the company is interested. Interesting for the hackers, maybe not, and he or she can relax. But suddenly, we would go to the higher level. I've already said that the supplies and counterparties are very important. You have to track their cybersecurity perimeter. Let me give you two more cases. Trusted relationships attacks, when, for instance, we have a common network access arranged between the companies. And that means that your counter agent may be used as a proxy to attack you, where a supply chain attack is possible when, for instance, we are the consumers of the software of, and then the hardware software supplier would be attacked and uh, therefore the criminal may get access to our infrastructure using that. This is like cyber weather forecast. It would be right if we make such weather forecast for our supplies and counterparties as well. And, for instance, we could warn them that our partner could do something to improve that situation. In essence, I think that we can even go up this uh, pyramid, and uh, Vadim will tell you more about that. Can we go even up if we want to make the weather focus not only for the company and the supplies itself? For instance, we can remember that these uh, suppliers are working not only for us, but for other companies as well, for our industry and for other industries as well. Now, the people with good imagination которые друг с дружкой связаны, и uh, эти вершинки разукрашены в различные соответствует Мы видим карту страны с нанесенными компаниями when we would see a map of the country with the companies working together the connection between them and we can cluster those companies by industries we may see the average cyber environment how attacks in one industry may impact companies in other industry who is the most valuable supplier not only we can offer some tool or some analytics measure for the regulator or for the ministries. But also we can go up that system and to have a look at that situation on a scale of a country. 
Uh, Certainly, on the scale of a country, the images would be even more interesting when you see not only the connections and ties between the companies, but you see how the industries would uh, impact each other, and moreover, you would uh, deep dive into the details, understanding what companies are most critical for this or that industry. Certainly, I will not go into details, uh, I will not elaborate on that, because uh, it would be subject matter for another presentation that we will render next year. So see you at the next uh, Positive Hacker Days and book the tickets. Thank you so much. We are done. Let's take any questions. And there is only one constructive one. Pareto uh, Principle. Does it work? Well, Vareta principle works everywhere. If you want to understand how you are going to build your information security, you can follow that principle and you can check whether your assumption is right or not. Speaking about uh, the paradigm of an effective and efficient uh, cybersecurity information security, then we have to make sure that there is a scenario which would prevent the hackers' actions. Pareto principle. So this is about testing of assumptions, minimum of efforts, and maximum of result. And, uh, for instance, uh, those uh, ratios and proportions, 20 to 80, probably would not be right, but you have tested, uh, you have checked your assumption, and then, once your assumption is right, you can invest all your money. Another question. How to organize the monitoring of 200 uh, suppliers and providers? Getting back to the very beginning of our presentation, Internet has lots of data. Internet has lots of data, and you need access to that where. Or you can use the services that have already aggregated that where. Uh, there might be some bots, and I would not uh, like to steal the bread from the speakers who would follow us. We'll, uh, tell you more about that, but in a nutshell, this is just a question of massive data collection. You can collect data about yourselves using automation or manually, but once we speak about a um, big number of providers, this process has to be automated, and you may say that the information would not be structured. But we're living in the 20th century, in the sense that the big uh, language models, email, and are there something that helps you to work with the unstructured data? And uh, once you can analyze one provider, you can analyze 200 providers. The problem that may emerge is how you process that big array of data. If this is only one company, you can take uh, an analyst or a person who has such skills, outsource that. Oh, you can grow such a person within your company. And um, this analyst would uh, translate those incoming data into reports. But the bigger this inflow of data is, uh, the less efficient that work would be. And uh, at some stage, you will have to think about a methodology that the analyst uh, will use. And probably the process could be automated. This is the approach I can suggest. That's it. I don't see any more interesting questions. If you think I fail to answer your question, find me on the sidelines of this conference and we'll talk one on one. Thank you. Thank you so much.